time without any further ado, I present unto you the speaker for the night, Evangelist Taj. Hey, greetings, everyone. We greet you in the holy name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the one and only true living God. We bear witness that there's no God besides him. There's no God with him. Certainly no God greater than him. We know him as the only wise God, and it's him and him alone that we do worship. We want to give honor and thanks unto our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the way of holiness. The scriptures teaches us that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So we're thankful for the day that the Lord opened the eyes of our understanding to this one way of salvation. Give thanks and praise always to our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, for sending his holy prophets and his holy apostles, men that God gave the message of truth to, and during that time, they declared that message to the people, how God allowed them to leave his holy words on record for our learning. So we do honor them and recognize them as well. We want to give thanks and praise always to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for our present-day prophet and apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings. We ask, that you <clears throat> we ask that you continue to keep him in your prayers, that the Lord will continue to strengthen his body, and restore his health, and that God will continue to feed him with knowledge and wisdom and divine understanding of the scriptures that he may feed us. Uh, when scripture says, the lips of the righteous feed of many. So we're thankful that we have a man of God over us that's able to feed us with the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you. We thank the Lord Jesus Christ for Thank the Lord Jesus Christ for all the faithful ministers. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ for all the faithful ministers and the truth of God around the world. And that we don't deviate from what is written in the scriptures. Pray for all the brothers that we all be one. We often say we never want to get into comparing the ministers. Every minister ministers according to the ability to which God has given him. So we, but we thank God for all the ministers, for Elder Robinson here working faithfully and diligently <coughs> in Jamaica. We thank God for his faithfulness to the ministry. <coughs> thank the Lord Jesus Christ for Minister Stephen Baker as well that's laboring here with Elder Robinson. And for all the brothers that are working faithfully here in Jamaica and the different parishes throughout this country, I want to continue to pray for uh, the ministers that have traveled from far. Uh, Minister Went, we thank God for him. <laughs> thank God for the message that came forth through him last night. Uh, we also Give thanks for Minister Nicholas Brown being with us as well. And also for Pastor Jensen from Curacao. We thank God for him. Thank you. 
come here for one purpose only, and that's to hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we come here for, and that's what we always must keep in mind, that the purpose of us gathering here for these convocations is to receive the instruction in righteousness, that we may apply the words of our Lord and Savior to our lives, that uh, we may work on self, that when God comes, that uh, we may be one in the number to go back with the church in the first resurrection. This is what we must always keep in mind. Uh, yes, singing and testifying and all those things are good, but the most important part of the worship, the most important part of the service is the word of God. The scriptures teaches us, uh, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to do what? Here. Then to give the sacrifice of fools. And we don't want our sacrifice to be a foolish sacrifice. So in order for our sacrifice uh, to not be foolish, it must be done according to what is written, if we want it to be acceptable in the sight of God. In the book of Jasher, first chapter of the book of Jasher. In Jasher chapter 1, Start at verse, and at verse 13. In Jasher chapter 1, beginning at verse 13. Right. And she called the name of the firstborn Cain, mm -hmm. saying, I have obtained a man from the Lord. Right. And the name of the other she called Abel, mm -hmm. for she said, In vanity we came into the earth. So here we're reading from the book of Jasher, and uh, Jasher has given us more detail about the events that took place uh, that we read in the book of Genesis. We are familiar with the brothers Cain and Abel, uh, but Jasher uh, gives us more detail of the events that transpired between the brothers. Jasher gives us more detail about many events that we've read about through Genesis and Exodus. Uh, it's, just, it's not a new book. <laughs> it's not a new book. It's been of old, my God. We can even read about the book of Jasher in the 66 that we already have. So uh, First Church did not write the book of Jasher. My God, this is divinely inspired. So Jasher gives more details of different events throughout the uh, scriptures in Genesis and Exodus, different, uh, more detail about the events in the days of Noah and in the days of Abraham and in the days of Moses. Just like uh, with the New Testament, Luke gives more details about the birth of Jesus Christ than Matthew does, than John does. Uh, same, all inspired by the same spirit, but it's just giving more detail about these things. So here we read in the book of Jasher, my God, we have two brothers, Cain and Abel. My God, and uh, the scripture says at verse 14 that what? And the boys grew up in their father. And their father gave them a possession in the land. And? And Cain was a tiller of the ground. And what else? And Abel a keeper of sheep. And what happened? And it was at the expiration of a few years. Now it was time to uh, present something before the Lord. At the expiration of a few years, time went by that what? That they brought an approximating offering. Now it was time to bring an offering unto who? The Lord. Unto the Lord. My God, that's what we want to talk about tonight. Bringing an offering unto the Lord. What kind of offering are we bringing unto the Lord? That is the question. What kind of offering? My God, an uh, offering is more than just putting uh, dollars in an offering pan. You know, it's more than that. That's one form of offering, you know, giving your tithes and your offering. That mu that's must be done. That's a commandment. God, but uh, what about those that can't give monetary offerings? What about those? Can they still give an offering? Of course. My God, the greatest offering that one can give unto God is himself. That is the greatest offering that we can render unto the Lord. My God, you may not have a dollar in your pocket, but I can, I can present my body a what? Living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. The scripture says, which is our what? Reasonable service. My God, that is the offering that we must give unto the Lord today. Our body. The scripture says in the book of Romans. In Romans chapter 12, 
Beginning at verse 1. What does it say? I beseech you therefore, I brethren, beseech you therefore brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies. That you do what? Present your bodies. Present. Present. God is not forcing us. God will not force us to serve him. He wants us to do what? Present. When you present something, we're doing it willingly. Not by constraint, but voluntarily. And that's what God requires a man to do. He wants us to do what? Present. present. Offer ourselves up. Present our what? Bodies. Present our bodies a what? Living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. In the days of old, in the uh, Levitical priests, they were offering sacrifices. You know, render God's sacrifices, lambs and bullocks, turtle doves and, you know, things of those natures. But uh, they would kill the beasts. And then they were presented unto God. My God, God doesn't want any more dead sacrifices. God wants living sacrifices. We are the living sacrifice. Our life is a living sacrifice. But in order for us to present our bodies a living sacrifice unto him, my God, we must present our inward man and the outward man. Cannot just give the outward man, but we must render the heart unto God as a part of that sacrifice. My God, we must render the spirit as a sacrifice. Because the scripture says the body without the spirit is what? Dead. The body without the spirit is dead. So when one just gives their body and not give their spirit or give their heart, that's equal to a dead sacrifice. Many are just doing that. They're giving the body, but they're not giving the heart. What do you mean they're giving the body? They're coming to church. They're coming to church. My God, they're singing songs. They're testifying. My God, they're looking like a saint. Got the head covered. Long dress. Three-piece suit with the bow tie. Tambourine and two Bibles in their hands. <laughs> coming to church. But the heart. Jesus said the heart is what? Far from me. It's more than just coming to church physically. My God, when we come here, we want our mind and heart to be here. Not just the body. My God, and many people are doing just that. Just bringing the body. But the heart, Jesus said, is far from me. Is our heart far from God tonight? And if it is, where is our heart? Who has the heart? Where is the heart? My God, I believe Second Ezra chapter four. Second Ezra chapter four and verse uh, two. Second Ezra chapter four, and at verse two. Jesus said, "These people honor me with their lips and draw nigh to me with their mouths, but the heart is far from me." So where's the heart at then? Let's read. In 2 Ezra chapter 4, and at verse 2. What does it say? And said, thy heart. Thy what? Thy heart. Thy heart. Hath gone too far. Thy heart has gone where? Too far. Where? Too far. Where at? In this world. Their heart is far from me. They bring in the body. Come into convocation. Traveling to different locations. Physically, they're there. But the heart is gone is far, too gone too far in, in this world. world. Gone too far in the world. The lust of other things have entered in, and then it's choked the word. We've become unfruitful, my God. And then as a result, no longer a living sacrifice, just a dead sacrifice. God doesn't want that. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Then he tells us how to do it. Holy. Holy. Acceptable. When it's done holily, it'll be what? Acceptable. Acceptable. Unto, unto God. That's what we want. We want our offering to be acceptable. We don't just want to come to church uh, out of habit, out of routine. This is not a hobby. 
Serving God is not a hobby. This is our vocation. This is our profession. This is how we make a living. The living that we want to make is eternal life. That's what we're laboring for. Church is not a game. We're not coming here to see who has on what. Not coming here to see, my God, who's talking with who. Coming here for the saving of our souls. And in order for us to do that, we must present our bodies how? A living, living sacrifice. sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable unto God. Which is your what? Reasonable service. This is what we're created to do. True service is when one is obedient unto the word of God. That is true service. So are we rendering God service that's acceptable? One must examine who? Himself. Now go back to uh, Jasher, brother. Let's look at the sacrifices and see which sacrifice are we giving unto God. Jasher chapter 1 verse 15. And at verse 15. And it was at the expiration of a few years. That they did what? Brought an approximating offering to the Lord. And Cain brought from the fruit of the ground. Cain brought an offering. He brought from the fruit of the ground. And Abel brought from the firstlings of his flock. Ah, notice the distinction. Just said Cain just brought from what? The fruit of the ground. But what did Abel give? From the firstlings of his flock. Notice the distinction. Firstlings of the flock. Firstlings, the best. Brought his best. My God, he wasn't just giving God anything. My God, the, the firstlings was the best. My God, no blemish in it. No defects, no deformities. Complete. Brought the firstlings of the flock. Are we giving God our best? Are we giving God our best? Or are we just giving him anything? Are we giving him the firstlings, the best? Or are we just giving him second-hand offering? One must examine himself. You hear that? You hear that? <laughs> This is, how, this is how I like it. We shouted last night. It was good last night. My God, we could shout maybe tomorrow, but tonight, let's examine ourselves and make sure our offering is acceptable in the sight of God. The scripture says, my God, and it was at the expiration, of verse 15. A of a few years. That they brought an approximating offering to the Lord. And? Cain brought from the fruit of the ground. Right. And Abel brought from the firstlings of his flock. My God, and as a result, what happened? From the fat thereof. Right. And God turned and inclined to God Abel. turned and inclined to Abel. My God, God had respect unto his offering. We want God to have respect unto our offering. Mm. But in order for God to respect and accept our offering, it must be done according to the word of God. Not according to our own standards, but according to the standards of God. My God, so uh, the Lord turned and inclined, and inclined to Abel. My God, and, and what else? And his offering. And a fire came my down. My God, and how do we know it was acceptable? A fire, a fire came down a from fire the Lord. fire came down from the Lord. My God, a fire came down from where? From the from Lord. From the Lord. Fire came down from the Lord and did what? From heaven and consumed, and consumed it. it. My God, that's what we want today. That's what we want. What is the fire that will come down? My God, the Holy Ghost. That's the fire. My God, Book of John, uh, Matthew John's, John said, uh, He that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost and with fire. When our sacrifice is acceptable in the sight of God, he will send down fire from heaven. Because the Holy Ghost is that fire. And the Holy Ghost is given to them that do what? Obey him. We want the fire to come down from heaven and to consume our offering. We want it to be a whole burnt offering to consume 
what? Our will. Consume our will. Consume everything that's in us that's not like God. My God, because that's what fire does. Fire consumes. Fire purifies. Fire purges. The word of God, the fire of God, the Holy Ghost comes to do what? Purge us. Cleanse us. Purify us. Consume us. So that we're nothing left but ashes. Ashes represent the complete consumption. Complete consumption. My God, a complete consumption will not happen instantaneously. Will not happen in a moment. My God, consumption takes place over time. It takes place gradually. So when the Holy Ghost comes upon us, it consumes our will. My God, but it's a gradual consumption. When a thing is consumed, that thing, uh, it changes appearance. The, my God, you set this uh, podium on fire, it's going to take time to burn. But after it's burned, it's going to look different than what it does now. Hallelujah. My God, when the fire of God comes to consume our will, my God, it's going to change our appearance. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Not the physical appearance, but it's going to change the mind and the heart. And then once the mind and the heart is changed, then the outer man will be changed. Hallelujah. Then you can say, my God, I'm a whole burnt offering. A whole burnt offering. My God, in the days of old, when they presented offerings up, they would, many times they would take the inward parts out. Take out the liver. Take out the kidneys. My God, take out the, the call and the, the heart. And they set it upon the altar. God, and then they set, it would be set on fire, consumed. The inward parts will be consumed. My God, that's what God wants for us. We, wanna, we must present our inner man unto him so that our whole inner being can be consumed. The scripture says that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. My God, that's the sacrifices of God. One must present their heart on the altar must present them their soul on the altar and ask God, Lord, consume me. Burn me up, my God, so that it's no longer I, but it's you in me. That my life is hid. My God, my life is hid. Are we giving God our whole self? Are we giving God our best? That's the question we must ask ourselves. And if we're all honest with ourselves, all of us know that we can do better. We can do better. All of us can do better. My God, but one must be willing to do better. The scripture says, And the fire came down from the Lord from heaven and consumed it. And consumed it. And what happened? And unto Cain and his offering. I got unto Cain and his offering. The Lord did not turn. The Lord didn't turn to his offering. Neither. And he did not incline to it. Why? For he had brought from the inferior fruit of the ground before the Lord. He brought from what? The inferior fruit. Inferior. The inferior wasn't the best. It was less than the best. God deserves the best. God is worthy of the best. God has given us life. My God, he pulled us out of darkness. He preserved us while we were out there in the world. My God, when we were getting high, he kept us. When we were uh, slinging dope, he kept us. Got shot, he kept us. Locked up in prison, he kept us. My God, and, he, and here we're giving him a less or inferior offering. He's worthy of the best. Here, my God, the scripture says that Cain gave of the what? Inferior fruit. Inferior what? Fruit. Fruit. He gave of the inferior fruit. Here God gives the increase. One planteth. Another water, if God giveth the increase, the increase will be the fruit. Here God gave the increase to Cain. 
gave him the increase of the fruit. But yet, he gave of what? The, the inferior fruit. Here God is blessing us in many ways. God has increased us in many ways. But yet we're still, many of us are given what? Inferior fruit. Hallelujah. Not giving him the best after he done increased us. After he done lifted us up out of darkness. After he pulled us out of the false church. After he delivered us out of different types of sins. And many of us are still giving inferior fruit. Don't pray like we ought to. Don't fast like we should. Not obedient to all of the word of God. But yet we want God to continue to do what? Increase us and bless us. But yet we want to continue to give him inferior fruit. We don't want God to turn from our offering. The Lord did, he turned, my God, from what? And he did not incline to it. He did not turn. It. Did not turn. And? And did not incline to it. What, for what? He had brought from the inferior fruit of the ground. He brought from the inferior fruit of the ground. Which type of offering are we giving unto God? That's the question we ought to ask ourselves. Is our offering acceptable in the sight of God? Is it? Those that don't have the Holy Ghost, what is in your life that's keeping you, my God, from receiving the fire from heaven? Those that have the Holy Ghost, what are we offering up to God to keep the Holy Ghost? Because the Holy Ghost is a gift. God gave it and he can take it away. And make sure the fire that's uh, moving on you is of God. Make sure the Lord is in the fire. <laughs> My God, make sure the Lord is in that fire that you are uh, professing. Make sure he's in that fire. My God, because uh, in the days of Elijah, the Lord wasn't in the fire. Make sure the Lord is in your fire. Oh my God, make sure it's the fire from heaven and not a strange fire. Not a strange fire. My God, are we offering an acceptable offering? Or are we giving a cane offering of the inferior fruit? And what happened? Of the ground before the Lord. And? And Cain was jealous against his brother. Cain was what? Jealous against his brother Abel. He was what? Jealous against his brother Abel. Why? On account of this. Abel didn't do anything wrong. Abel gave his best. Abel gave the offering that was acceptable in the sight of God. He did nothing wrong. But Cain, my God, was jealous towards Abel on account of this on account of this on account that the Lord did not turn to his offering Cain was in the wrong not Abel is jealousy in our heart tonight because your brother is given an offering that is acceptable in the sight of God because fire is coming down, my God, upon your brother or upon your sister. And the fire hasn't come down upon you. Why is that? It's not your brother's fault. It's not your sister's fault. One must examine themselves. There's no need to be jealous of your brothers or your sisters in the truth, in church. No need for that need to be jealous of one another. Why is that? Why are people jealous? A lot, many times, insecurity. Insecure of their own self. And as a result of that insecurity, I got, they, 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 they want to uh, be jealous towards their brother or sister. My God, jealousy will lead to hatred. And then hatred will lead to murder. That was demonstrated right here. Jealousy is the vehicle to hatred, and hatred will drop you off at murder. 
Examine yourselves. One scripture says that jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Cruel as the grave. Why? Because the grave deteriorates. The grave will consume. You put a corpse in a grave, my God, and after time, you go back and exhume that corpse, it looks different. The eyes fall out. The mouth drops. Creeping things are eating at it. What's happened? It's deteriorated. Jealousy will do that. It's as cruel as the grave. Jealousy will deteriorate you. It'll eat your eyes out. Have you looking at your brother and sister differently? Have your mouth jaws drop. Now you, you're, you're like an open sepulcher speaking evil against your brother and sisters. <laughs> Creeping things are now uh, eating up your insides. Sin is now working in you to do what? Destroy your brother or destroy your sister. All because, by God, they gave an acceptable offering. If brothers and sisters are working in the church faithfully and diligently, my God, don't hate on them. Don't be jealous. My God, if Elder Robinson appoints a brother to do a position and he didn't appoint you, I'll say, why, why not me? Why him all the time? Why always him? Why always her? That's a question you need to ask yourself. What is it about me? What am I doing? What am I not doing? But there's no need to be jealous of one another. This is not a competition. We are not competing with one another. The purpose of coming to church is to be saved. And that's what we must always keep in mind. The objective, the goal, is to make the first resurrection. That's what this is about. So get the competition out of your mind. Get it out of your heart. My God, no church should be competing with another church to see who's more spiritual. This is not a competition. We're all one people. I got it. If we can't be one down here, we will not be one up there. The word of God says we're going to meet the Lord how? Together. So how can we meet the Lord together that up there if we're separated down here? If we're divided down here? Get the competition out of your minds. My God, ask God to root out that jealous spirit that may be in my heart. Cain was jealous. Against his brother Abel on account against of Against his this. brother Abel. Are we jealous against our brother or our sister? Ask yourself. And if it is, my God, you better ask a root that jealousy out of me. Because like I said, jealousy will lead to hatred and hatred will lead to murder. My God, and that's what happened here. The scripture says that what? Cain was jealous against his brother Abel on account of this. And what happened? And he sought a pretext to slay him. He sought a what? A pretext to slay him. He sought a reason to justify killing him. But yet his brother did nothing wrong. But he was, he was seeking a reason to slay him. A, sought a pretext uh, uh, some, to justify his, his evil. And that's what people do in church. They, they, they just want to find the, the littlest thing to try to do what? Slay you. All because of the jealousy. Find a little thing. Uh, she got the same dress as me. She got the same scarf as me. And then they go running to somebody else. You see that sister? You see how she's out of the devil. Her wearing the dresses you 
that, 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 that didn't uh, initiate or ignite that fire that was in you uh, to, to cause uh, her to uh, be consumed with a strange fire. That was already in you. It's already in you. You just want to find a reason for it to come out of you and make it appear like they did something wrong, and it's not them, but it's you. He sought a pretext to slay him. And that's what folks do in church. Want to find little things to, you know, just justify, uh, he, she's out of devil. That brother's out of devil. Uh, he took my pen and didn't give it back. <laughs> he took my pen and didn't give it back. So he's out of devil. That spirit was already in you. Him taking the pen didn't, that, that, that didn't cause you to say that. That spirit was already in you. Cain sought a pretext to slay him. And? And in some time after. This, in what? Sometime in after. In what? Sometime after. In some time when? After. Give it time. What's in a person will always come to surface. Always. Give it time. Whether there's love or hatred, it's going to come out of you. Whether there's respect or envy, it's going to come out of them. Give it time. Whether there's loyalty or treason, give it time. What's in a person will always come out. Now, let me say this. That doesn't mean you sit in judgment and see, well, well what's in went? <laughs> what's in went? Well, I'm just waiting to see. What's in went? No, you ask yourself that. Oh, what's in me? Oh, what's in me? <laughs> Don't worry about no one else. God, examine yourself. But as the scripture says, and in some what? Time. In some time after. In some time after. The event already took place. But time had to elapse for what was in Cain to come out of him. In some time after what? Cain and Abel, his brother, went one day into the field to do their work. They went one day in, the, in where? In the field. To do what? Their work. Right in church. Amen. We're doing work right in church. Working right in the field. Right in the field. Doing your work with your brother. Working on your auxiliary with your sister. And what happened? And they were both in the field, Cain tilling and plowing his ground, and Abel feed, feeding his flock. And what happened? And the flock passed that part with, which Cain had plowed in the ground. And? And it sorely grieved Cain on this account. It what? Sorely grieved Cain. That was already in Cain. This was his pretext. This was his reason to uh, lash out on his brother. It was already in him. Jealousy was already in him. But it took the right atmosphere to bring what was in him to surface. And many times God will create the atmosphere. God will create the atmosphere to bring what's in a person to surface. We can hide from man. God, we can disguise ourselves from man, but we cannot disguise ourselves from God. God sees the hidden man of the heart. God sees the secret views of what's in man. You can project oneness. You can project loyalty. But within, my God just raving him. I can't stand him. I can't stand her. I can't stand, no reason for ministers to be jealous of one another. No reason for ministers to be jealous of one another. The scripture says we're what? Laborers together. We're laborers together. 
So there's no reason for ministers to be jealous of one another and then go behind the other minister back to other members in the church and start spreading your fire with your tongue. Because the tongue, my God, is a world of iniquity. This small thing can cause a great fire. So there's no reason for ministers to be jealous of one another. My God, every minister differs in their ability. So there's no need to, to sit and why he always got to teach. Why elder got to always send him there. Do you hear that? need for that. Every brother ability is different. My God, the church is as a divine solar system. In the natural solar system, you have the sun, bright light, but then you have stars, lesser light. Each star, the scripture says, differs in glory. Some stars give off more light than other stars. Some stars you can see bright in the darkness. Some stars, you know, just a, just dim, but it's still light. <laughs> it's still light. The stars may give off different amounts of light, but it's still light. The church is a divine solar system. God is a sun, S-U-N, because he's the source of all strength of all life. The ministers are as stars. The apostle, my God, gives off a lot of light. <laughs> he gives off a lot of light. None of the ministers give off as much light as he gives off. What is the light? Knowledge. The light is knowledge. Scripture says, the entrance of thy words giveth what? Light. So each minister might got ability to produce light or, or, or teach the knowledge of God differs. But as long as the ministers are giving off light, that's all that matters. As long as they're giving off the light of God and they stay in the word, every minister differs according to his several ability. So there's no need for the ministers to be jealous of one another. No need for that. And there's no need for the saints to try to pivot ministers against one another. No need for the people to have a, a favored minister. No, no need for that. None of that. My God, this is not an American idol or Jamaican idol if they have that here. <laughs> My God, this is not an American idol. I don't want to hear uh, Brother Curry. I want to hear uh, Minister Wint. I don't want to hear uh, Minister Wint. I want to hear uh, Minister Baker. It's the wrong spirit. One should want to hear God in the minister. It doesn't matter, my God, who the minister is. As long as the minister is staying in the word, as long as he's staying in the book, because see, when you do that, you have respect the person, and you commit sin. So none of the ministers should be, have that spirit of jealousy or competition to see who can excite the crowd the most. <laughs> who can excite the crowd? Who can get the people running around the church? Who can get the people to, to shake, rattle, and roll? See, if you get the people to do that, then God is not in it. That's a strange fire. The purpose of ministering the word is to educate the people. Not to entertain, not to excite, but to give insight, to give knowledge, to give understanding. 
so the people can better, my God, work and serve the Lord. So it's not about excitement. The devil don't care how much you run around the church. He'll run right with you. <laughs> run right next to you. In some cases, run right in you. Is our offering acceptable in the sight of God? Cain, my God, time went on, and what was in him came out. The word of God says what? At ver uh, back in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 18. And Cain approached his brother Abel in anger. Right. And he said unto him, What is there between me and thee? That what? Thou, what is there between me and thee? See, Cain was expressing what was in him. Abel didn't have any issue. Cain was expressing what was in him. But he tried to flip it and make it seem like, what's up with you? What's your problem? What's wrong with you? My God, and it wasn't so, what the words say. What is there between me and thee, that thou comest to dwell and bring thy flock to feed in my land? And? And Abel answered his brother Cain and said unto him, What? What is there between me and thee? <laughs> what? That thou shalt eat the flesh of my flock and clothe thyself with their wool. Hey, you using my, uh, the flesh of my flock and, and their wool. So what's your problem? Don't try to make it seem like I got the problem. But that's what folks would do. They say, what's your problem? What's wrong with you? What is, what's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with you. What's wrong with you? <laughs> what's in you? But they try to flip it and make it seem like you're the problem. Uh, no. What's inside of us? What's inside of us? The word of God says what? And now therefore, put off the wool of my sheep, and with which thou hast clothed thyself, and recompense me for their fruit and flesh, flesh which thou hast eaten. Right. And when thou shalt have, shalt have done this, what? I will then go from thy land, as thou hast said. And what happened? And Cain said to his brother Cain Abel. Cain said to his brother Abel what? Surely. Surely. If I slay thee this day. My God, look at this. Look at and Surely if I what? Slay thee. If I slay thee. This day. What? Who will require thy blood from me? My God, he, Cain was just looking at the eyes of man. But he failed to remember that God was looking at him. He said, who shall what? Require thy blood from me. He was just looking at man. He said, surely if I slay thee, and this was his brother, what's in a person will always come out. My God, Cain, all this began because of jealousy. All this began because of jealousy. The word of God says what? And Abel answered Cain. And saying what? Surely. Surely. God. Surely God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man may try to plot your demise. But if you know you're innocent, surely God shall what? Who has Aven made us in the earth. He will do what? Avenge my cause. He will avenge my cause. Abel was innocent. Did nothing wrong. My God, all he did was gave a sacrifice unto God that was acceptable. That's all he did. But his brother, my God, gave the inferior fruit, and as a result, he was jealous of him on account of this. Now he wanted to slay him. But Abel, my God, uh, he was innocent. He said, surely God will avenge you. What do you mean? You're going to reap what you sow. You will reap what you sow. Don't think you're going to get away with doing wickedness in secret. And don't think that God is going to recompense you for that. You will reap what you sow. My God, Cain was going to reap what he sowed. Many of us, my God, some of the things we're experiencing now is because of things we sold years ago. 
because of things we sold years ago. Some of us were disrespectful to our parents years ago. And then we wonder why our kids are disrespectful to us. Reaping what you sow. Surely God will do what? Who has made us in the earth. And? He will avenge my cause. What? And he will require my blood from thee. And? Shouldest thou slay me. Right. For the Lord is the judge and arbiter. And? And it is he who will require man according to his evil. Right. He will requite man. He will do what? Requite man. What? According to his evil. And? And the wicked man according to the wickedness that he may do upon the earth. You will, mean you will reap what you sow. And what did he say? And now, if thou shouldest slay me here, what? surely God knoweth that. If you're going to kill me here, see, there's more than one way to kill. Hallelujah. More than one way to kill. Hallelujah. Many are killing in church right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How? With this tongue. Hallelujah. Killing with their words. Hallelujah. Life and death. Lies in the power of the tongue. And many are killing their own brother with their words. Surely, my God, God is going to requite you of your wickedness. He's going to, my God, and the wicked man, according to what? According to the wickedness that, that he, may he may do upon earth. And now, if thou shouldest slay me here, surely, God knoweth thy secret views. Told you, God seeth everything. God sees everything. We can hide from one another. We cannot hide from God. He said darkness and light is equal unto him. He said the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. God sees everything. Be real. If there's any ounce of jealousy in you towards your brother and sister, Ask Lord, Lord, deliver me from this. Root this out of me. Root it out of me before it spreads in me. Don't allow jealousy to consume you. This is why we need the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is a what? Consuming fire. And many of us, my God, haven't received it yet because of jealousy. And I'm not talking about a godly jealousy. The word of God says what? God knoweth thy secret views. And? Will judge thee for the evil. For what? Which, with thou, which thou didst declare to do unto me this day. And? When Cain heard the words which Abel his brother had spoken. What happened? Behold, the anger of Cain was kindled. My God, the anger was kindled. Against his brother Abel. The anger was already there, but it now was just enhanced. It was kindled. And? Against his brother Abel. For what? Declaring this thing. All he did was speak the truth. <laughs> All he did was speak the truth. Don't allow the spirit of jealousy and competition to be amongst the people of God. Don't allow that to be amongst us. We should be one. My God, if my brother is uh, rejoicing, I should rejoice. If my sister is rejoicing, I should rejoice. My God, if my sister is mourning, I, sh I should be mourning with her. My brother's mourning, I should be mourning with him. Not rejoicing when he's mourning, and not mourning when she's rejoicing. That's the wrong spirit. The word of God says what? And Cain hastened and rose up. Cain hastened and did what? Rose up. And? Took the iron part of his plowing instrument. My God, he took the iron part of his plowing instrument, and what did he do? With which he suddenly smote his brother. My God, he smote his brother, and? He slew and him. He slew him. The plowing instrument that many people are using today is his tongue. That's the plowing instrument. My God, and we're using it to do what? Dig in earth. Many of us are slaying our brothers and sisters with the plowing instrument of the tongue. To their face, greetings, brother. Praise the Lord. Peace and blessings. Oh, good to see you, sister. Oh, you're looking good, sister. <laughs> but, but behind their back, I can't stand them. Can't stand them. Come on, Nick. 
Greetings, bro. Praise the Lord. Oh, good to see you, bro. Good to see you, bro. Good to see you, bro. But behind his back, oh, I can't stand it. Mm. 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 Plowing. Killing him. Plowing him. Give me the book of Psalms, brother. Psalms 129. Hallelujah. Psalms 129. Psalm chapter 129. Start at verse 1. And at verse 1. What does it say? Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. Right. May Israel now say. Many a time. Have they afflicted me from my youth. And. Yet they have not prevailed against me. Verse 3. The plowers plowed the upon. The plowers what? Plowed. The plowers plow. Upon my back. Of what? Upon my back. The plowers did what? Plowed upon my back. Mm. Greetings, brother. Oh, good to see you, brother. I can't stand this. I can't stand it. Mm. <laughs> what are they doing? Plowed Plow. upon, upon my back. And made what? Long their furrows. I got to digging deep in me. Hallelujah. Digging deep in me to do what? Cause pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But they're doing it where? Behind my back. But what's done in the dark shall be brought the light. Shall be brought to light. You will reap what you sow. You will reap what you sow. Job chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job 4 and 8. In Job chapter 4 and verse 8. What does it say? Even, even as, I, as I have seen. Even, my God, even I have seen. This is a law. Even I have seen that what? That they plow iniquity. They do, they what? Plow iniquity. They what? Plow iniquity. They plow iniquity. And? So wickedness. And so wickedness shall what? Reap the same. All right, all right. Hallelujah. You're going to reap what you sow. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You want to plow iniquity. Plow what? Iniquity. Plow iniquity. And so wickedness. And so wickedness. Reap the same. You're going to reap the same. You want to sow discord amongst your brothers, amongst your sisters? You're going to reap the same. Cause, try to cause confusion amongst the people of God? Try to bring division amongst the ministers. You're going to reap the same. You will reap what you sow. That's law. That's just as good as Acts 2.38. You will reap what you sow. Even I have he, seen that they that they they that plow iniquity they that plow and plow what iniquity iniquity and so wickedness shall what reap the same. Cain slew his brother with the iron part of the plowing instrument. Many of us are doing that, slaying our brothers and sisters with the plowing instrument, the tongue. Sowing iniquity and wickedness with the tongue. Don't allow anyone to come to you and speak ill against your brothers and sisters. Don't allow that. Someone comes to you, the Bible says, mark them. Mark them, which cause division amongst you. Then it says, do what? Avoid them. Get away. It didn't say, come, you know, cuddle with them. <laughs> It didn't say do that. It didn't say fellowship with them. It said what? Avoid them. Mark them. Make a note of them. Make a note of them. My God, and then they will always come off uh, so loving at first. But then give it time. That, 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 that tongue of the serpent going to slip out. They try to put it back in. Too late. It's already gone out. What's in a person will always come out of them. My God, the word of God says uh, back in Jasher. Chapter 1, still at verse 25. What does it say? And Cain spilt the blood of his brother Abel and upon the earth. What? And the blood of Abel streamed upon the earth before the flock. And what happened? And after, after this. Ah, look at this. After he had killed his brother Abel, then what? Cain repented having slain his brother. But the damage was done. 
It was done. Yeah, he repented after it, but it was done. My God, he let something, he let a spirit overtake him. The spirit of jealousy. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Don't allow that spirit to overtake you. The devil wants to sow discord amongst God's people. And as Elder Gary said, he said earlier, he said, don't be ignorant. He made reference to that scripture. Do not be ignorant of Satan's devices, lest he get it, take up advantage of us. Don't be ignorant. The devil is not called serpent for nothing. Hallelujah. Very subtle. He'll work in whosoever allow him. Don't allow yourself to be used of the devil. Like I said, this is not about competition. This is not about getting a pat on the back from man. It's not about getting a shot out over the pulpit. <laughs> this is about making the first resurrection. Salvation is at stake. Our souls are on the line. We're not playing church here. What we're doing now will, my God, prepare us for when the Lord to meet the Lord. After, we're Cain, after this, Cain did what? Repented and having slain his brother. Right. And he was sadly grieved and he wept over him. Right. And it vexed him exceedingly. And Cain rose up and dug a hole in the field. Right. Wherein he put his brother's body. And, and he turned the dust over it. And what else? And the Lord knew what Cain had I done to his brother. The Lord knew what Cain had done and what happened. And the Lord appeared to Cain and said unto him, Right. Where is Abel thy brother that was with thee? Where is your, he already knew. See, what sin you, what you going to say? Where is he? And what did he say? And Cain dissembled right. and said, I do not know. Look at that. Lied. Lied right to God. I don't know. What you mean? You just buried him. You just, you just killed him and buried him. You saying you don't know? I do not know. What? Am I my brother's keeper? And he tried to get smart. And what happened? And the Lord said unto him, What? What hast thou done? And? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth out unto me from right. the ground, where thou hast slain him. Right. For thou hast slain thy brother, and hast dissembled before me, and, and didst imagine in thy heart that I saw thee not. Look at that. Many people, that's what they get so overtaken by that spirit of jealousy, that they forget that God sees what's in the heart. They imagine in thy, in thy heart that I what? Saw thee not. Here God sees all things. His eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth. My God, here you imagine in thy heart that thou seest not, nor? Knew all thy actions. God knows everything. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with God. And if there's anything in our heart that's unlike him, we must ask the Lord, Lord, move this out of my heart. Give me a hatred for that which is in me that's not like you. Give me a perfect hatred for it. Hallelujah. Cain was going to pay, get paid back for what he did. Hallelujah. He was going to reap what he sowed. But the reaping of what he sowed would take it. What happened years after the fact. Years after the fact. To the point I believe uh, Cain had children and grandchildren. My God, let's read, let's drop down for the sake of time, let's drop down to uh, verse 35. At verse 35. Chapter 1 of Jasher, verse 35. Still in Jasher 1 and at verse 35. Right. And at that time, Cain also be began to build a city. And what happened? And he built the city and he called the name of that city Enoch. And? According to the name of his son. Right. For in those days the Lord had given him rest upon the earth. And what happened? And he did not move about and wander. Right. Wonder as in the beginning. And Irad was born to Enoch. So Irad was born to who? To Enoch. Enoch was the son of Cain. So now you have Irad was born to Enoch and? And Irad begat Mechuel. Mechuel. And Mechuel begot Methuselah. So these are all the offsprings of Cain. Generations. So time had, had elapsed. Now and let's go to Joshua chapter 2 so you can see where Cain was going to reap what he sowed. Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2. And at verse, uh, start at verse number 26. Joshua chapter 2 and at verse 26. Right. And Lamech was old and advanced in years. Lamech was what? Old 
and advanced in years. And? and his eyes were dim that he could not see. Right. And Tubal Cain, his son, was leading him, and it was one day, and it was one day that Lamech went into the field, right. and Tubal Cain, his son, was with him. And? and whilst they were walking in the field, right. Cain, the son of Adam, advanced toward them. And? For Lamech was very old and could not Lamech see much. Was very old. Time expired. Time went by. My God, here's Cain and was in the field. They were walking in the field, and Cain, what? Cain, the son of Adam, advanced towards them. For Lamech, Lamech was very old, and could not see much. And to Balcain, his son was very young. And what happened? To Balcain told his father to draw his bow. And with the arrows, he smote Cain. Look at that. Look how much, but the time that elapsed, Cain had children. His children had children. Their children had children. Time elapsed. But he still was going to reap what he sowed. The word of God says, so the scripture says that what? With the arrows. Verse 27, read that again. And Tobal Cain told his father to draw his bow. And? With the arrows he smote Cain. Who was what? Yet, yet far, was yet far off. And? He slew him. For what? For he appeared to them to be an animal. He appeared to them to be an animal. All this was the working of God. The scripture says what? And the arrows entered Cain's body. body Although he was distant from my them. God, those, those arrows had Cain's name on it. Those arrows had his name on it. Not literally, but God was directing that. Although he was far from them. Hallelujah. He was far from them. But my God, now it's time to be, be, to be requited of the wickedness that you perform. You will reap what you sow. The scripture says what? And he fell to the ground and died. And? The Lord requited Cain's it evil. It is. The Lord did what? Requited Cain's evil. According? To his wickedness. Which he had done what? To his brother Abel. Long ago. God didn't forget. God doesn't forget. This is why we must fall on the mercies of God. Judge me and my God in mercy. And not in wrath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have mercy on me. But how can we ask God to have mercy on us when we don't have mercy on others? How can we ask God, forgive me, when we don't forgive others? God didn't forget. My God, even though time elapsed, the scripture says, and the Lord requited Cain's evil. According to his wickedness, which he had done to his brother Abel. According to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken. According to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken. If God says a thing, it's going to be. He said, you reap what you sow, it's going to be. Close out in 1 John. Chapter 3. First epistle of John, if I'm correct, chapter 3. Beginning of verse 1. Verse 11. 1 John chapter 3, and at verse 11. What does it say? For this is the message. This is the message that he heard from the beginning. This is the message that you heard from the beginning. That that she what? We should love one that another. We should love one another. We heard that from the beginning. This is principles. That we what? Love one another. Verse 12. Not as Cain. Ha! Don't love one don't, don't love you like Cain. Because if that's love, I don't want nothing to do with that. That we love one another. From the heart, not just from the mouth. My God, not as Cain who did what? Who was of that wicked one. Who was of that wicked one. And slew his brother. He did what? Slew his brother. He slew his own brother. And? And wherefore slew he him? Why, why, did he, why did he kill him? Because his own works were evil. Because there was something in him. His own works were evil and? His brother's righteous. My God, verse 15. 
Whosoever hateth his brother, whosoever hateth his brother, is a murderer. But that, but I go to church every day. Is a murderer. But I speak in tongues. Is a murderer. But I repent and been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Is a murderer. But I lead I lead praise and service. Is a murderer. I'm an usher. Is a murderer. I'm a minister. A murderer. The titles don't mean nothing. Titles won't save us. Hallelujah. It's the love that we have towards one another and towards God. Because if I love my brother, I'm not going to murder him. I'm going to pray for my brother. If I hear something, my brother fell, I'm not going to keep my foot on his neck and keep holding that over his head. I'm going to pray for my brother. I'm going to help him up. I'm not going to keep him down. But when you hate your brother, you're a what? A murderer. And? And we, ye know that what? No murderer hath what? Eternal life abiding in him. You don't have, my God, you got to examine that Holy Ghost you say you got. Here you hate your brother. Here you murder. And you say you got the Holy Ghost? Examine that Holy Ghost. Examine it. Scripture says, love worketh no ill. God is love. God is the Holy Ghost. So if you have the, the Holy Ghost in you, you're not going to work ill against your brother or your sister. Whosoever hateth his brother, whosoever hateth his brother, is a murderer. Is a what? A murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Cain reaped what he sowed. All because of jealousy. That spirit is in us. I ask the Lord to root it out of me. My God, before it consumes you. And then that jealousy will lead to hatred, and that hatred will lead to murder. Remember the word of God, brothers and sisters. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. Acts 2 and 38. Acts chapter 2. And at verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, What? Repent. Get sorry. Hallelujah. Repent. When? Now. Repent and? Be baptized. My God, then you can be baptized how? Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? The remission of sins. And? Ye shall receive the, holy, the gift of the Holy Ghost. If there's anyone here tonight that desires to obey Acts 2.38, be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. You can stand on your feet at this time and we can get you baptized tonight, if there be any. <laughs> Wonderful. Those that are standing, you can go to the brothers or the sisters with the signs. At this time, we turn services back into the hands of Elder Gary Robinson. We cannot hide from God. Eyes are watching us. Whatever we do, wherever we go, we cannot hide from God. His eyes are watching us. God's eyes are watching us. We cannot hide from God. His eyes are watching. He watch wherever we go, whatever we do, we cannot hide from God. His eyes are watching us, God's eyes are watching us. We cannot hide from God, His eyes are watching he watch whatever we do, wherever we go, we cannot hide from God. His eyes are watching us, God's eyes are watching us, we cannot hide from God. His eyes are watching, He watch wherever we go. Whatever we do, we can.
cannot hide from God. His eyes are watching us. God's eyes are watching us. We cannot hide from God. His eyes are watching. He watch wherever we go. And whatever we do, we cannot hide from God. His eyes are watching us. God's eyes are watching us. We cannot hide from God. His eyes are watching. He watch whatever we do. Wherever we go, we cannot hide. From God, his eyes are watching us. God's eyes are watching us. We cannot hide from God. His eyes are watching. He watch wherever we go. And whatever we do, we cannot hide from God. His eyes are watching us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a word. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Glory to God. My God, my God. We thank God for the word. Church is not a joke. When you come to church, we need to hear from God. We need to hear a word that speaks to our soul. My God, I thank God for my brother. I thank God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thank God for the word that God put in his mouth. Word that all of us need to take seriously and examine ourselves. Because none of us will get away. God is watching all of us. Everything that is done in secret, he's seen. And we will be rewarded for it. Brothers and sisters, let us take this serious. My God, the word comes, it, it hit deep. It hit deep. We'll reap what we sow. It might not be today you reap it. Might not reap it today, but you're going to reap it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, I always look, and because I know that, I say, you know what? Whatever I have sown already, I just let that go and reap that. But I'm not, I don't want to sow anything else. I don't want to sow any, any wickedness. Because anything you sow, you're going to reap. So now I want sow righteousness. And reap mercy. Yeah. I God, I thank God. I, I thank God for my brother. This is what I love to hear. Every man have a different ability. But I thank God for the word that God put in his heart. And it's for all of us to examine self. No time to look at anybody. Do like what the disciples say. Lord. Is it I? 
can't hide from God. May God bless you and keep you. We are having a wonderful time. Yeah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah! These are the type of message that you roll over in your bed, it is in your ears, it's in your heart. I love it. And I pray we take it to heart. I, I will take it to heart. And I will examine myself and see where I'm at. Because I want to go back to be with God when he shall appear. May God bless you. May God keep you. Is our prayer. Uh, the international saints are being asked to meet at the information desk after service out there. Um, so you in the temples, you might have gotten the message from your temples. Check with your business committee leader for your meal ticket for tomorrow. Right, for all our members, the meal will be <laughs> served to you free of cost, but it will be ticketed. So please get your ticket voucher from your business committee rep so we can have things flow smoothly tomorrow. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father Jesus Christ, we thank you for your goodness and we praise you for your mercies. We thank you, you're blessed, you kept us, you watched over us, oh God, and given us peace. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing us together one more night in fellowship, in convocation. We thank you, Lord God, for your word that did go forth. We thank you, Lord God, for the servant whom you have used, Lord God, to bring the word unto us, to trouble our heart. Oh God, I pray that you have mercy on us, Lord Jesus. Help us to evaluate, examine ourselves. Repent, my God, for the wrongs that we have done. My God, the evil that we have done and are doing. My God, help us to repent and run to you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, and make the necessary amendment. Forgive us, Lord God, for all unrighteousness. Help us, Lord God, from now on to sow, Lord God, to the Spirit. My God, that we might reap life eternal. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Lord God. The many things that we have done that are against your will. My God, I pray you have mercy on us, Lord Jesus, and help us to make the necessary adjustments, Lord God. Help us to run to you, Lord God, with all that we have got to fall prostrate at your feet. My God, that peradventure you might deliver and forgive us, Lord God, for our wrongs. Keep us in your right hand. Remember those that are still without thine Holy Spirit. My God, help them to launch out, Lord God, and seek you from that hallelujah, from the depths of their heart. My God, that you might come in them and fill them with thyself, that they too might rejoice in this salvation. Remember the sick and afflicted ones. My God, touch them, grant them healing, hallelujah, and deliverance, Lord Jesus. My God, those that, my God, are in the land of desperation, Lord Jesus, grip them by thy great power. My God, bring those who are back, slain them back to you. My God, give them deliverance and give them peace. Help us to continue to look to you, Lord Jesus, from whence all our help come. My God, guide us and protect us as we separate one from the other tonight. We ask for journeying mercies to our several home of abode. Guide us on the road. This dri the drivers, keep them safe. Lord Jesus, help us to reach our destination safely. My God, and if it is your will that we might come again to give thy name the praise. Thank you for being among us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for visiting us, Lord God. Continue to visit us tomorrow, Lord Jesus. Bless us, Lord God. Give us a convocation to remember. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, be with us, Lord Jesus, and let your spirit reign supreme. Break everything that is not of you, Lord God. Lord God, crumb the enemy, Lord Jesus, and break every stronghold. Set your people free by thy great power and do for us, Lord God, more than we are able to ask of you. These are not mercies we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, we say, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.